$200. I'm gonna talk about I Feel Pretty, because it's the worst movie I've seen in a very, very long time, and it made me very angry at how shit it was. Critical's video is two minutes because he gave up. I'm not gonna do that. So, the premise of I Feel Pretty, if you haven't watched the god-awful trailer, trailer that's so bad that I was able to predict the third act turn from the trailer, but we'll get to that later. Uh, the premise is Amy Schumer's character, Renee, goes to a spin class and gets a head injury, and when she wakes up from being knocked out by it, um, nobody calls an ambulance, but instead she looks in the mirror and she's like, Oh my god, I'm fucking gorgeous! Holy shit! So, um, I have a serious problem with that as a premise, just because, like, if it's magic, then we can just say, no, oh, it's magic, whatever. Hand wave away the question of, like, why is she thinking that? Um, as well as, like, there's supposed to be something about, like, she's not seeing herself as different, but she's seeing herself differently. Like, that's supposed to be, I guess, the takeaway from the middle third? Um, or middle act. So, I saw an interview with Amy Schumer where she's like, she's not seeing herself as skinny necessarily, she's just seeing herself differently. Like, she's happier with her own looks, which is, mm, I, I don't believe that, because the very first thing she does when she wakes up, again, like I said, she looks in the mirror and is like, oh my god, I'm gorgeous. The girl who woke her up is like, mm, are you, are you all right? Are you, you feeling okay? And, um, like, before she even gets to that, she's, like, grabbing her legs, but you can see the way she's grabbing her legs is, like, she's trying to grab a part of her legs that's thinner than Amy Schumer's real-ass leg, and then she's like, look at my abs, plural, Feel them, they're hard as rocks, plural, or whatever, hard as a rock, I think, maybe, but it's definitely abs, like, and she's, like, rubbing herself, and, like, the whole movie, and this is why I have a problem with it being just a head injury and not a magic spell, is that the joke, the one joke that this movie has is, oh, look, look, she thinks she looks good now, but isn't it funny because she doesn't look good and it's not like uh in the interview amy's like it's not about some troll like thinking she's pretty and she's right amy schumer is not fuck ugly unattractive she's not even the least attractive person in this movie there are two others that are i would say are lower especially once she gains the confidence to start suddenly wearing like she just suddenly owns form-fitting clothing and then better lighting, and does her makeup better. Like, she gains the confidence to start putting effort into how she looks, and then, no shit, she suddenly looks a bit better. But, we never see her as she sees herself. Like, the audience isn't in on the joke, or like, we're in on a different joke than the one that she's in on, where like, our joke is, look, she's gross still, and she's doing all these things that gross people aren't allowed to do. Whereas she's like, look, I'm pretty, I'm not gross anymore. I can do all these things that I couldn't do when I was gross. It's like, hmm, don't do that. That's, that's not great. So I'm probably going to wind up hammering home the head injury point later on. But let's go on to the next point that I kind of already touched on a little bit in the first point, and that is that there are only three other fat people on Earth in this universe. Amy Schumer's character, Renee, is one. Like, she's the one, and then the three others are her fat friend, some pudgy guy at the bar that is used as a punchline for cringe, kind of, and the third one is her co-worker that works in the tech support, department with her and he doesn't he still gets the same treatment as like he's just this gross fat guy and he literally has poop jokes like he has there's a scene of him in a stall really needing to poop 
and she won't go away, and that's the joke. So, like, if that's the case, then sure, it, it helps the joke a little bit, of or the initial conceit of, like, all of the really attractive people are looking down on these disgusting garbage people. Like, even in wide shots of beaches and city streets, there aren't any other fat people in this movie. It's weird. And there are no midgets. Or otherwise handy-capable people. Like, she just lives in this universe where everyone is fucking gorgeous. And there are no average to unattractive people. So, they are the Hollywood negative fives that they look like, rather than the five to seven range once she starts putting on the better looking clothing, like I said, and putting on better makeup, and doing, putting effort into her appearance. Number three, <clears throat> and these are not really gonna be in any, um, not in any real coherent order, and I forgot to put one point in that I may as well just talk about now. It's a comedy movie, and there are... I, I won't say there are no jokes. There are no jokes in the movie that work. But there are whole scenes that you can tell their jokes, and you you know where they're going, and then they just don't get there, and the, the scene ends. The biggest one, and it's a scene that helps to non-sell the concept like it's the one that hard states basically that there is no magic in this universe and that is Amy Schumer is uh, she's in her bed or in her apartment doing whatever she's like lying on her bed drinking or eating something and she's watching the movie big and it's, the, it's specifically the Zoltar scene where he gets the card that says your wish has been granted. And there's a thunderstorm outside behind her. And then, so she's like, oh my god, I'm gonna go and do that. That's real. What? So she goes out into like an alley or just finds a fountain. And she flips a quarter in it because there's a thunderstorm. And the quarter doesn't get struck by lightning or anything. And then she goes... I wish I was pretty. And then she holds up a mirror and looks at it and she's like, please, 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 please. Looks at it, oh man, or oh shit, or something. Like, and then the scene just ends. It's, there's a joke there, and, but like the audience constantly saw that nothing happened. Like you could keep her out of the shot or, you know, any number of things. Like, what I just stitched together and made funnier. Like, even with a better punchline, I think, that I put together myself in my basement and with a glass of water or something. Whatever I decide to use for the fountain analog. But, like, it doesn't work. Because you... We don't get to see the reveal of nothing. She does. And it's like, oh, you idiot. So that, that hard closes off any magic in this universe. The reason I say that is because she thinks that it's a magic spell, and she outright says that later on in the movie, or multiple times throughout the movie. But the reason it can't be magic is because she's watching Big, and in Big, it was magic. It was like, very specifically, that machine was magical, and it granted his magical wish. So, since that's a movie that still exists in this universe, that means it's still an entertaining movie, because guess what? Real life doesn't have magic! If real life had magic, Big would be a documentary in that universe, right? It's not real. You can't do that. Why would you think that that's real and go out and try to do it yourself? Like, she's not smart, at the very least. Like... Okay, let's assume that she actually thought that would work. Why? Why would you think that? What are you, just stupid? Uh, okay. So, on top of being stupid, Renee is a shit. 
and is the closest thing this movie has to a villain. Uh, you cannot tell me that Lily LeClaire and its employees and its models and everything, that they're villains. They're not. They're just... They're not tactful. They're just kind of mean to unattractive people. But we only even see them in the context of the offices or the runway or anything like that. And um, it's not so much that they're, like, shitting on Amy Schumer's character. It's just, like, you don't belong here. Partly because she didn't look like she belonged there. It's a beauty company. I'm going to give a beauty company some wiggle room as to whether they're going to hire on looks. Because looks are pretty important for a modeling agency, a makeup company, any of that shit. It's a business built on altering looks and making things look prettier and, you know, whatever. So, it's very understandable that they wouldn't want someone who's even, even a little above normal average to, um, to not be their front of the house. Like... It's not them being evil, it's just business. Like, it's not even shady business either. They're pretty upfront about, like, go away. But she gets the job, and she, like, it's another joke that, like, it's implied by the camera, kind of, or the editing. I don't know, I don't actually know what people mean when they say, like, the camera treats X as Y, whatever. It's implied that she does not get the job because she has all this new confidence, but that Lily LeClaire's granddaughter, who's currently running the company, she noticed, hey, I'm trying to launch this um, diffusion line. I'm trying to launch this product that's for a person like her. Maybe having a person like her around would give us all some insight on how best to launch this product. So... The confidence thing has nothing to do with her getting the job. It's just pure dumb luck that they happen to be launching this product and she happens to be someone who would be familiar with such a product and could offer some useful information if asked in the lunchroom like she is later. And it's like really shrewdly brought up like, oh, I just wanted to bounce some ideas off of you. What do you think about this? person who doesn't belong here like every single other person in this room what do you think and then she just able, is able to offer it um actually going back to the big thing this movie's subplot or major plot i'm not sure which one is the bigger plot but one of the plots of this movie is the plot to big and by that i mean it's someone who doesn't belong in a company getting into the company, and then revolutionizing the way that that company works because they have layman's expertise. That That's an oxymoron. That's weird. But, yeah. Um, Tom Hanks' character in Big, he gets into the toy company and he's able to offer what kids actually want because he's actually a kid. In this, Amy Schumer's character gets into the headquarters of Lily LeClaire and she's able to offer customer insight on what should or should not happen with the target or cuhls tier of product like she mentions um sometimes the makeup doesn't come with a brush and you know whatever it should come with a brush um little shit like that but yeah they're just they're just doing their business she doesn't belong there, and there's no actual issue with that. They're not evil. Amy's... She's the worst person in this movie. Once she has all this confidence, and she's, like, hanging out with her friends, they try to take her on a group date. And on the group date, she's, like, really trying to push for, um, like, just be hotter, all of you guys. Just say sexy things, and be really aggressive and let them find out how boring you are later. Like, <laughs> I actually like the other two friends. They're so nice. The, the, uh, the fat one, she winds up pointing out to this, one of the guys on the group date, he has this hand-knit, um, 
hand knit scarf and it looks really cool i liked it a lot and she goes oh is that is that hand knitted i i do some some loom weaving and i'm like dude that's cool i want to i want to listen to that i love the process of things like this and then she just like uh, to divert the conversation away from that look at all the like just trying to make it about appearance and her two friends rightfully call her out they're like dude what the shit are you doing stop <laughs> like why are you being like this like nobody nobody thinks that renee is pretty and they don't even think that she's seeing herself correctly but nobody outright says dude look in a mirror or like you need to get your head checked or anything it's like this is going back to the head injury thing she was she hit her head hard enough to knock herself out in the gym for a non-determined amount of time um and no ambulance was called no nurses no, none, none of that shit just gets an ice pack and a free um bandana i think was given to her that I don't even think she keeps. And uh, nobody checks on her medically. Never goes to the hospital once in the movie. Um, and then later on in the movie, she hits her head again. And this time she's bleeding. And the fat guy with the poop joke on the toilet, he mentions, oh my god, you're bleeding. She's like, yeah, whatever. N once again, never goes to the hospital. God damn it. And I forgot what I was going on about just then. It was the group date thing. I think I was done with that point. Anyways, onwards. I've already touched on there being explicitly no magic. Um, the guy in the trailer at the laundromat that's like, Give, what's your number? And then she misinterprets it as him trying to get her number. He is a nice guy TM. And this is outright stated by him at the end of that scene, I think. Or maybe it was... Um, a few scenes later, a lot of it bleeds together, but he's like, I'm not the guy that would really ask for a number. I'm more the guy that just is friends with you for a long time and never makes a move and then stalks your Facebook page for 10 years. Ha ha ha, isn't that funny? And she's like, boy, that sound, that sure sounds specific. What's the picture's name? And he goes, Rachel. And then they, they like laugh it off. And this is the guy she winds up with. I'm like, mm, no. <laughs> like, I I like that she inspires him in him the confidence to like dance in public and stuff like that. Be yourself, man. That's cool. But the whole Facebook stalking thing as a joke, like that's come on, man. That's not great. Don't do that. I try as best I can to not do that. That's why I don't have a Facebook account anymore. <laughs> so, um, now going back to their friends, um, Michelle Williams' character, who is the more attractive of the two friends, and the most attractive of the, most conventionally attractive of the three main friends in the movie, and she's, in real life terms, easily up there with all the models in the Lily LeClaire building, but in this movie, she's down slumming with Amy and other girl because she's nice, I think. There isn't any... There's no stated reason other than nothing. She, She's just a nice person. And I guess that's enough that you're unattractive now. Like, she's not nice... Or, she's not mean. She's not aggressive towards guys. She's actually pretty cool to just chill with her friends and eat Chinese food and go places and go on group dates. She's not a bitch. Therefore, she's just another fuck ugly troll for some reason. Like, I, I get it. Like, just have whatever friends you have, man. But, like, there's this separation in the movie between, like, here's all the pretty people way the fuck up here. And then Amy and friend and Michelle Williams are just, like, down in this inescapable trench where it's like, no one will ever love you down here. But why, though? She, it's not like she's, like, a fucking 
degenerate drug addict or something. Like, she's just a nice person. I don't, I don't understand. Have the friends you have, but I don't understand why you wound up with these people. Specifically Amy Schumer's character, because she's fucking horrible. The other friend is fine. She's just a cool person. I would hang out with her. She, lo she does loom weaving. It's awesome. I knit. Fuck it. The next thing is something that was in the trailer. And it's in the movie. One of the worst fucking things in the movie. And it is Emily... Um, whatever her last name is. It starts with an R and ends with Elski. And I'm not going to try and pronounce the middle. Uh, <laughs> she has, like, body image issues... But as a joke, because she's really hot, right? She's really impossibly hot. So Amy Schumer's character's like, I, do you even have all the ribs that I have? Where even are your organs? I want to punch you in your dumb face right now. She says all three of those things in the space of like a minute to her. But it's like, body image issues are very real. And if... If you don't handle them right, they can be as dangerous as untreated head trauma. Oh, wait, this movie doesn't care about untreated head trauma either. Okay, depression doesn't matter. It's a joke. Fuck it. Who cares? She's pretty, therefore she can't possibly have any problems. Oh, no. You're pretty and you're rich. You're immune to depression, right? It's not like it's a biological issue and has nothing to do with your social standing or how you look, right? Movie? That people can be sad. And it's a chronic condition. And it leads to them hanging from rafters by a rope. That's not good. That's not a joke. That's not funny. So, towards the end of the movie, getting back on track, they, uh, Amy Schumer was supposed to do this presentation just to be the poster girl for the, uh, the diffusion line. She was supposed to do the presentation, she would be representative of the product, she's like the VP of the line, um, and it's just this really fancy PowerPoint, whatever. She has this really inspirational speech where she's like uh she's like this is a picture of me the, mind you this is after she i'm gonna have to go back for an additional point after this one um this is after she hits her head a second time and erases the magic um with more brain damage uh so she she looks up and she's like this is a picture of me, like, a week ago. And this is a picture of me, like, three weeks ago, before I hit my head the first time, but sh I'm not going to tell anyone about that. So she does this, and then she realizes the pictures look the same. And this is the point that I'm going to have to come back to. Uh, and after the speech, like, the hot guy in the movie that isn't her boyfriend... He goes, that's one of the good ones there. And the girl that's running the company, she's like, I wouldn't be here. Or, no. She's like d being down on herself. And then her grandma's like, Renee wouldn't be here without you hiring her. And then she goes, no, grandma, I wouldn't be here without her. And then the grandma goes, none of us would be here without Renee. To which I say, no. You, unless you just don't have an R&D department and you've never heard of, like, customer outreach or, like, market research, what the fuck are you doing? Like, do you have no people that can go to Target, look at something, and be like, oh, hey, this is what those guys are doing, let's just do that. But slap our name on it. You don't have a single person that can do that in your entire company, and you're releasing this line? You were that reliant on Amy Schumer's character? You deserve bankruptcy. That's ridiculous. That's impossible. No. Bullshit. So, yes, all of you would be there without Renee. You just wouldn't be in that exact 
scenario where you just got this fucking crazy person giving a weird speech where they looked at two pictures of themselves and was like, oh my god, they look the same. Ah! Which, actually, now thinking about it, the, uh... <laughs> that she had those two pictures in her presentation and that there was supposed to be a juxtaposition between them looks extra stupid to the audience, or at least it should have. Because the audience should have been like, they, mm, those aren't different. I don't know why you put those there. Hmm. So, speaking of those two pictures, this is, like, the biggest plot chasm in this whole thing, which is... If she was able to recognize that both of the pictures looked the same, and earlier in the movie she's like looking at old pictures of herself and seeing the old her and going, man, the old me was dragging us down. We need to take new pictures. This is before they go on their group date. They evidently never take another picture or if they do amy never ever once gets to look at a single one of them because if the reveal at the end works and she was able to recognize her self who doesn't look any different in the photo as being different had she looked at a photo of herself while she had the glamour eyes she would have realized, oh my god, something is horribly wrong, either with that camera, <laughs> and you guys are horrible assholes who are playing some disgusting prank on me, or with my brain, because I am not seeing that when I look in a mirror. So it's like, what the fuck? Nothing in this movie works. It's disgusting. And I hated it. I don't know how long I've been talking, but it's too long. So I will see you the next time a movie is fucking god-awful. And I can pick it apart like this. It should never be this easy. I'll see you later.